Square Episodes podcast. This week it's Dan hosting. Hello, I'm joined by Rebecca. Hello. And Nicole. Hello. Um, so you can do all the usual stuff, follow us on Twitter, go to our website www.squarexo.co.uk. Uh, we've got YouTube, we've got a Twitch, we're on Patreon which is patreon.com forward slash squarexo. Uh, all the usual gubbins. Joe's not here as you can tell so that's why it's not as succinct as usual. Mm-hmm. If you want to find out where we are just listen to one of the old podcasts really, sorry. Um, Joe will be back next week, he's, uh, he's just having a week off so it's just us three um, and because of that I'm going to do what's coming up in the show. So this week we are going to go through the latest news. Our topic of the week is do review scores matter and should we listen to them? We're going to then have user questions from Nicole, what we've been playing from Nicole and then I'm going to say goodbye to everyone, hopefully better than I've just said hello. Yeah so it's a bit slapdash this week. I've, I've been really busy lately so my head's a bit woozy. Um, so yeah there we go so welcome everybody episode 53 um i'm gonna go straight into the news let joe put some music over it and uh, we'll crack on so on with the news i gotta go to the email that joe sent me (laughs) okay so this week's news (laughs) sorry this is awful hopefully everyone's okay (laughs) so the first bit of news joe's told me to tell you all is that firmware 5.5 is live for everyone has yeah. have you guys downloaded it? Were you on the beta? Have you I, noticed any differences? Oh, I don't. don't. Think I, I don't know if I've downloaded it or not. If I'm being honest, <laughs> I did because I remember just dis- like distinctly going through all my notifications and having the ability to delete them. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was so good. Oh, can you not delete your notifications on whatever's before that? No, you can like you can clear some of them, but it's not a very it's not a very good way of doing it. And in this, you can clear like all of the notifications because I've had those of community post stuff that I've now gone through and deleted so everything looks so much more oh it's so good mm. I can't say that's anything that's ever got in the way of me enjoying the console I've never noticed so no, no, <laughs> it bugs me yeah. really bugs me yeah is that I tend to go into the notifications bit and mark them as red because then it doesn't scroll across the top but mm. I could do that anyway so yeah is that the, is that the kind of the biggest deal for you, Nick, with five point five? Yes, <laughs> so it sounds it worth bad, it. but I hate it. I hate it. I hate going across my notifications because I go across like the the long bar, and it just comes up and there's stuff there. Even when I know there's nothing there of interest, it really irritates me. So it just being a lot cleaner really eases my mind. Is there anything of any interest ever anyway? No. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 So weird. <laughs> Uh, one thing I wish they'd do, and if PlayStation do listen, which would be nice, um, I'd love them to align the character numbers on the PS4 share Twitter upload to how many mm-hmm. characters you can actually have on Twitter, because it's oh, still please. stuck on the old it is, count, yeah. and it's very frustrating when you're trying to share a screenshot with all the developers and you can't fit the names in, because we haven't got mm-hmm. enough characters. So, it's really annoying for um, sharing like trophies as well because if you um, you know, obviously when you get a trophy, the notification pops up. You press PlayStation Home and you can share it. Yeah. Um, a lot of the trophies descriptions don't actually fit into that character limit, so it'd be really nice to actually post the, yeah. my my achievements in full. That would be lovely. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. I'm surprised they haven't changed that yet. I would have thought that was something they would have done as soon as the Twitter characters extended. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I would have imagined it was automatic so that mm. it, it linked f- to Twitter through some kind of API or something, but obviously not. And it's probably something that they might not ever do because it, I don't know how many people will care. So, yeah. So that's the first bit of news. Anyway, I was on the beta. I've downloaded the full version, but I've not noticed any, any difference. It's not made any difference to my experience. So, yeah. Mm. Next bit is Oculus Rift headsets everywhere are offline because of an expired security certificate. So, not really PlayStation related, but I just take it it just means that someone's hacked the system and I don't know what they can get out of it, but I'd imagine usernames, passwords, credit card details, see what everyone's looking at. So, yeah. Um, apparently, another bit of news the PS5 development kits have been sent to third party developers this year. So, that's a rumour. Um, mm. It's a rumor I'm not massively surprised about. I think that talk of PS5 will have to start soon. Mm. Um, when was the PS4 released? Oh, 2000. 
13 yeah. or 12, something like that. So we've, yes, a good five years old then. So I, I, I did put a tweet out saying I think we might see it next year. Not necessarily a release, but I think we will see something physical, some kind of hardware or a new DualShock or, or something. Um, we have got to use a question later about it, I believe, haven't we, Nick? Um, we do indeed. Yeah, because... I think it'd be interesting to discuss what we think it needs to bring with it in order for it to be a decent enough upgrade because yeah. I think um, console buyers have possibly proven over the last year that power isn't everything. I yeah. think you know people want more than just horsepower or you know loading speeds or pixels now. So we'll talk about that later though. Um, Sony announced a limited edition God of War PS4 Pro bundle. Which looks okay, I suppose. Um, it looks okay. It's, it's nothing like what you can, you know, make up, Dan. So what you yeah. imagine. My biggest bugbear with it was that the controller and the console are different colours. Different colours. I don't. Yeah. What? Yeah. Just basic for me. Basic kind of branding is is you've got to be uniform and consistent. And I just find that odd that you'd have a a matte grey console and then a shiny silver controller. Mm-hmm. But maybe it's so that people buy. A, a grey controller which you can't anyway to go with your grey console so what did you guys think of it um i didn't hate it but i don't love it do you know what i mean it's sort of just there and i'm sort of just over here if you know if yeah. that makes any sense <laughs> we just coexist <laughs> yeah where where do you guys stand on limited edition consoles Would, is it something you'd buy to use would you ever upgrade your current consoles to a limited edition one what what are your feelings? No, I don't, I don't know. I just, I kind of, I know it sounds really pathetic when I say it, but I get quite attached to my consoles, like, and I wouldn't go out and exchange them for another console because it's got a nice kind of design on it. I mean, for me, it's just an aesthetic. I think it looks nice, but I wouldn't necessarily invest in them because, and I mean, it's not the kind of thing that I'd look to collect either because it's, it's not exactly like, you know, pocket money money is it it's yeah. like a lot it's a substantial amount of money and i wouldn't look to collect it and it's just i think they look pretty i can say oh they look pretty but that's as far as it goes for me yeah, yeah i'm about the same really i think i always see it as um i already have one of those so why would i need another one even if they look nice i'm like they look nice but that's it i mean i don't know and if they used to bloodborne one i might change my mind but right now <laughs> i'm very yeah, yeah obviously, i don't know i'm saying i might I, yeah i would but um, right now, it's just I I still got the launch one, you know the the very first one that came out. Yeah. I still got that model, and it's I've never ever really thought, oh, I'd really like to um, you know, upgrade to even a pro. So I'm very much just happy with what I already have. I do much prefer the original shape, the kind of the do angular you? one over the the curved one. Yeah. Really, think, that's yeah. surprising. Yeah. I think it's much more modern in its design, but um, but yeah, you you can't get them anymore, can you? I yeah. I feel with limited edition consoles, I I'd, I'd like to buy them to collect them if I like the game and I like the design. So the only one I have, as we've mentioned before, is the anniversary one. Um, but I I something that I wish Sony did and that I hope they do do going forward is I feel that with limited edition consoles, the fans are almost missing out because. You've got, you've already got PS4. You've already got your games. And then they release this nice new looking one. You kind of, yeah. you're almost being punished to buy it again, kind of. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd quite like it. And I think what Xbox did with the X, where they, the like day one consoles are slightly different to the rest, mm. is a nice way of kind of um, thanking the fans for being early adopters and giving them something rather than just releasing a standard console. Everyone jumping on board and then six months later or a year later releasing something special and kind of putting everyone's nose out that's already got a console i don't know it might just be me that feels like that but i'd really like it if for ps5 for the day one one there was just i don't know maybe the the controller was all black rather than having colored buttons or something that just made it that made you want to buy it on day one and want to keep hold of it rather than just being a star because when i bought my pro i sold my standard ps4 um, unlike Unic, I wasn't that attached to it because it wasn't special. It was just a standard PS4. Whereas if it was a day yeah. one one, I'd have been like, oh, I'm going to treasure this because it's special. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, more news, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, uh, some merchandise 
popped up in GameStop's database and then in yellow Joe's written game was announced so looks like um, there's going to be a special event on May the 17th to reveal the game so Black Ops yay. 4 <laughs> so yeah that's no yay from me um, yeah, what is that like the 8th Black, uh, the 8th Call of Duty game because it's released yearly still isn't it yeah Yeah. oh gosh don't don't even <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I, I can't even follow them anymore I just kind of pick them up because <laughs> They're just Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. Comes a little bit of white noise to a non-fan, I think. It's just, oh yeah, another yeah. card game, another card game. I'd imagine they're going to do something different, but just you're still shooting men with a gun that points yeah, into the I'm, screen. I'm a little apprehensive about this, though, because I, I, from what I've heard, there's a possibility they're kind of going back to what was kind of less favoured by fans, which is, I think, after like the likes of World War Two and even recent Battlefield kind of releases, I think it's kind of treading on very kind of thin ice but i don't know i'm gonna kind of go with it see what happens like so mm. yeah well uh, i suppose world war Two was coming from the historic point of view i don't really know where they are where the black ops games are set in kind of time but didn't they go into space in the last one yeah that was kind of when <laughs> um a lot of fans kind of <laughs> yeah. lost their um a, a lot of people lost like lost interest and i mean that kind of I considered it like tainting of the series because all this kind of double jumping around and stuff that's been carried over into World War Two now where people can't actually physically boost jump but you'll be mm. playing multiplayer and everyone's still hopping around trying to dodge bullets and do you want to know how much that winds me up? <laughs> like, because anyway. in reality <laughs> yeah. yeah, literally, like, it's insane like, who does that? Like, when do you see that in a war, like, in war, ever? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. well we're not going to go into how historically accurate the Call of Duty games are because obviously they're not very much so <laughs> Yeah but um, yeah, it's just it's. I'd like to see less of it, and I'm kind of worried that it's coming back into the limelight. If that makes sense. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, cool. I've just lost my screen. <laughs> Next bit of news. Oh, Division Two. I don't know. So Ubisoft's working on Division Two. They've obviously. I saw a um, a logo, kind of pop up in my on my Twitter timeline. So I take it it's official. Um, again, I've not played the first division, and again, I'm not massively. It's not not my kind of thing, but it was fairly well received. Received the first one, I think. A lot of people were playing yeah. it, so they were really good. I yeah. liked it. Are but, you going to get it then? Um, quite possibly. Yeah, it kind of depends on my situation at the time because it's um, a game I definitely preferred playing with other people. I didn't enjoy playing it alone, so. Mm if I've got a well kind of established group of people I can play it with, then perhaps I'll buy it, but I'm not going to necessarily be in a rush to get it because it's just, I can't enjoy it by myself. So is, was there a single player campaign in the first one? Or um, was it all an online team shooter? Yeah, I think it was all online. Like I can't, I literally can't think about like, no, I don't think it was yeah. like it didn't it wasn't single player i think it was just all a kind of big co-op thing and i just found it was a lot easier co-op as well so just makes I, me I, wonder and maybe this is for another show but i wonder how oversaturated if it is oversaturated that the, the industry is getting with kind of online uh co-op shooters or online shooters in general yeah. because you kind of find that destiny comes out big groups of people jump on destiny it's great because everyone's on it and then something else comes out and the people that can afford to move across to the new game all do and then destiny kind of suffers because of it and then so i feel like all these companies are going to be vying for that mass of people to be online at once and only yeah they can only all be somewhere at once one at one time so i don't know maybe ubisoft will have to do something slightly different with the division two possibly to to engage either a new audience or to keep those uh, that are i don't do you see what i'm trying to say it's hard to put yeah. it into yeah. words but <laughs> like i don't know i feel that uh yeah i just that would worry me possibly as, as someone making that game that if everyone i mean i've been listening to the radio today everyone's talking about Fortnite. i, I don't know about it really Oof. um Oof. it seems everyone's oh. playing it everyone and their dog and their kid and all that and you kind yeah. of think, <laughs> dog <laughs> so <laughs> Ubisoft with Division 2 have got to pull people away from that if they can and I it just I don't know yeah I don't know how far the industry can take those kinds of games but we'll see I suppose um, mm-hmm. Bethesda have opened a new studio an Austin office I don't know whether that points to a new game or whether they're just gonna um, 
kind of support with production of other games. I don't know too much about Bethesda. That would have probably been better for Joe to be around to talk about, but they're expanding <laughs> anyway, so which is good news because we always get bad news about studios closing, so it's good to mm-hmm. see that that's expanding. Um, Days Gone was delayed to 2019, which I think was both of your number one most anticipated game of this year. Yeah, I think yep. I had an inkling that it was it might be next year, though, so I'm not too shocked by that. I think it's a bit yeah. like the Red Dead situation where they said spring 2018, and everyone was like, it's not coming out spring in 2018. Yeah. No, because so, we were talking about, weren't, weren't we, when we were talking about um, what we thought our game of the year was going to yeah, be. Yeah, we weren't like, sure. I want to say Days Gone, but I don't think it's going to be out. Gonna out. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, I, I, we really haven't seen much of it at all, have we? To, to, no. We've had like a few four or five minute clips, but nothing solid. And I don't know whether the delay will be because they're not happy with how it's going or just because they just need more time to make it the game they want it to be. That's Again, I, I put on Twitter, um, a little bit jokingly, but next year possibly means we're going to now have Days Gone and The Last of Us 2. And they yeah. seem like quite similar games to be released in the same year. Um, yeah. But then The Last of Us 2 could well be hit by a delay or possibly be pushed PS5. Again, that's a massive me making stuff up rumour. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I, I still didn't think much of Days Gone, though. I still... Still, I don't know. I'm still quite dubious over it because not much has been shown. So, um, yeah, we'll see, I suppose. But it still leaves a good year for games coming out. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. So in some ways, it's quite nice that they spread it out just so that your wallet's not going to be too (laughs) badly hit. So I consider it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, yeah. Well, that's it for the news, actually, that... um, Joe sent me free. We normally do the charts, but I wasn't sent the charts by Joe, oh. which is a shame. So I did. I'm just looking uh, again, unprofessional. Do you, do you want to improvise? Do you want to improvise? Well, I mean, Grand Theft Auto charts. Is it? Yeah, I can make it up. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto was number one. FIFA was number two. Uh, I don't know. Something else rubbish was number three. Go and buy good games, people. Stop buying the same rubbish. Um, <laughs> so that's it for the news. Uh, if we've missed anything or you want to have your say on what we've said or prove me wrong or tell me I've done something wrong, get on Twitter um, and we can chat there. So I'm going to hand over to Rebecca now to hopefully host this week's topic. Okay, so for this week we kind of got our topic from a little bit of a Twitter feud we had. Um, we were talking to one of our Twitter followers, Barry. Um, his name is Barry Barfly on Twitter and he was saying that he doesn't really see the point of having review scores attached to reviews and he'd much rather just read essentially an opinion piece for a newly released game to make his own mind up from there without having to look at a score and that to change his mind. So with that in mind, we're just going to talk about do we think review scores matter when we're buying stuff? Um, As consumers, do we ever get put off by the score attached to a review or are we very set in our own ways where you don't really mind, you know, you have your heart set on it, you're not phased by a number and you're just going to go and get it. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. So I'll start with, uh, do you want to go, Dan? You sound like you got something Yeah, I was just going to say, it, it kind of stemmed from the fact that um, we've given out a, a handful of 10 out of 10s, I suppose. And when yeah. I say we, I mean, when we review games as Square so there are individual opinions. We don't all discuss with each other. Or, you know, if I've played a game yeah, and Becky's played a game, individual. yeah, that's it. It's it's down to personal opinion. Um, so the, the beginning of the issue was that a 10 out of 10 should never be given because that means the game's perfect. So I, I understand that sentiment, but 10 out of 10, although you can't get any higher, is still not really perfect because it's 10, for me, a 10 out of 10 just means it's a really, really good game. Mm. Um Mm. It can't be perfect because you've the 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 ability to score it more um, uh, individually or to a finer point is is impossible because you're giving it a number out of ten. It's like you know you've yeah. only got ten numbers to give it. Um, <laughs> so I, I agree all day long that a five out of five uh, five out of ten games average. So most games on average should get five out of ten because that is the average. That's how it should work. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I know I'd give games ten out of ten that aren't perfect. Um, so yeah, that was where it started from. I I even think marking out of a hundred and giving a hundred out of a hundred still doesn't mean it's perfect. It just means it's a really no. really good game. Um, so th- 
anyway, that aside, for review scores, I I agree, I suppose, to some extent, that they are completely redundant. Mm-hmm. All it is is it's a, a number out of a number that someone feels they have to use to illustrate how good something is. And it's very yeah. rare in other parts of life, I suppose, where you do that. Trust pilot mm. is becoming more prevalent where people review their experiences out of five. You can still give something five out of five. It doesn't mean it has to be the best thing ever. Um, but the review should all be about what the person says as opposed to the number that's attributed to it at the end. The problem is with the industry is that it needs a number for things like Metacritic to exist or <laughs> Open Critic or all of that kind of, uh, all of the score aggregators and all of the back pack, uh, back patting and publishers who have targets to get certain review scores they have to have scores to fulfil that. So whether we like them or we don't like them or people like them or they don't like them, I don't think we're ever going to see them go anywhere, I in my either. opinion. Um, I think that the industry is too tied to it. Didn't one website do it at some point where it was just something like buy, try or avoid? Yeah. And And for me, that works better. But then you could say... If five games get by, so if Call of Duty got by, if Burnout got by, if Rhyme got by, and Persona 5 got by, they're all very, very different games. So how, as a consumer, do I know which of those games am I going to like? I've still got to read the review. So, yeah. 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 I've babbled on a lot about it, but I just <laughs> I feel that it isn't always all about the number. It shouldn't be about the number at all, but we're never going to get away from the number. I I don't mind the number. I do think it does influence me as a consumer. So I can probably, you know, go online or, you know, read a magazine and see a game I think I like the look of. And then if I read the review and they only give it a six, I might think, oh, I'm not sure about that anymore. Um, as a writer, I guess I do like to give out <laughs> reviews without numbers because anyone who has been you know with the website for a long time knows that I do a lot of opinion pieces lots of why I loves and why I loves are essentially a review without the number attached on the end um so I guess I kind of do dabble in the process of getting rid of numbers uh, sorry numbered reviews but if I'm doing a review I do think there should be a number on the end if you know what I mean that probably just completely contradicted what I said but I, I think get, it's so I tied get, to us, though. That's the problem. It is, isn't it? I, I think, you know, I don't think we should stop it as a website. I think that it's a good process. I just think that um, it can put people off. Do you know what I mean? Well, but at the end of the day, it's your opinion, isn't it, about a game? a game that gets 6 out of 10 might turn you off. The thing is, a 6 Possibly. out of 10 is above average. Yeah. So a 6 out of yeah. 10 game. I think the whole problem is that the numbers have been skewed and that people think if it doesn't get an 8, 9 or a 10... It's and it's crap. bad. But yeah, really, even sevens now. People yeah. are like... Mm. But, yeah, re- realistically, f- five out of ten games that are reviewed should get mm-hmm. five out of ten because yeah. there's average. Um, so I just think the whole the whole system could do with <laughs> looking at... But it, it can't... It, it's too big a problem. Yeah. What about you, Nick? And I mean... Oh, sorry, sorry Nicole. No, no, I'm no. just completely sorry. Um, I do think as well that, you know... I don't agree that there is ever such a thing as a perfect game. I personally have only ever given a 1 10 out of 10, and that was to a game that I thought had um, flaws so minor that I couldn't even really pick it for the flaws. So I do get the point, you know, some people saying, oh, you shouldn't give 10 out of 10s out, but sometimes you just review a game and you're like, well, you know, it's pretty much flawless in my opinion, so what else are you going to give it? You know what I mean? Yeah. You give it a 9 because I don't want to give it a 10 because it's, People will say to me, like, oh, it's not perfect, you shouldn't give it a 10, but there's nothing wrong with it, you can't give it a 9, do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and the mm. problem is then, though, is that someone will say, well, what if the next game you review is better? So exactly. how do you distinguish between those two games? But if something to you is a 10 out of 10 and something else is a 10 out of 10, why does it matter which one's better? Like, yeah. it's, maybe this is where the whole flipping console wars comes from. Where people so. are so mm-hmm. caught up on something being better than something else, rather than... Like looking at it for its own merit merits. Yeah, I think maybe that's yeah. Yeah. Could what be. about you? Sorry, carry on. No, oh. no. I was just saying it could be Nicole. I'm so sorry for interrupting you. Earlier. No, Would you like to say okay. your piece now? <laughs> no. Um, well, I don't. 
I think they're necessary. I think they help people. Because if I had, like, a penny for every time someone said that they were put off a game because they looked at the score and mm. they judged their kind of whether or not they were going to buy it on that score, like, to me, that obviously indicates that there's some need for it. If, like, it, you know, it's kind of... It's where people decide where they're getting a game and, like... But, but they never really know if they're going to like that game unless they play it, are they? Yeah, that's that's, that's the cute. thing. Like personally, from my perspective, I don't. I look at those scores as someone's individual opinion, and if it's a bad thing, like a bad kind of, if they give it like a three out of ten or something, that only kind of makes me want to read into that review and think, oh, you know, yeah, fair enough, they gave it a three out of ten, but that might be because they don't like this genre of game like mm. i don't base whether or not i'm going to buy a game on its review scores because i've enjoyed games that have been <laughs> widely discredited yeah. because what i enjoy about it i have a very as i've mentioned before i, I could hate a game for 90 percent of its features but it could have that 10 percent of features that i really enjoy and i will pursue and enjoy that game for those reasons and a review for that reason might give something a three out of ten because it's got all these bad features but in that three out of ten, it doesn't actually kind of account for the fact that it has a feature that I might enjoy. Yeah, yeah of course. So I, I don't know. I think they're necessary because obviously people feel they need them. But oh, for yeah. me, it's not something that dictates whether or not I buy a game like at mm. all. I so think as well, the outlay to buy a game can be for some people quite expensive. So if you're going to spend forty or fifty pound on something, I suppose you want that validation before you spend that money that you're going to get value for it and that you're going to like it as opposed to spending out your hard save money and then it being crap so you, exactly. want, you know you want to find out what other people think and i suppose that is fair enough to some extent and if i mean we were all burnt by ukulele to some you know, extent <laughs> no, where you're don't. excited for something and then it gets reviewed badly but then you still buy it and then you're like oh yeah actually they were right but mm. i think you're better to try it for yourself and find out that they were right yeah. rather than to just dismiss the hard work of a of a team of people that have built that game so mm-hmm. yeah i'd probably give more games 10 out of 10 than i would 5 out of 10 because i tend to buy games that i f- know i'm gonna like as well i'm not yeah. i don't i can't remember if i've ever read a review of a game that i wasn't gonna buy and then bought it off the back of the review really? yeah i think i've always had an idea of what i'm gonna buy I might look at a review to see how someone else views it, but then I've still gone and bought it. I, I don't. I think maybe with age and less time to play games, I'm more decisive on what I want, and I know I want it, so I disregard what anyone else says. So. Yeah, I've I've been like that with um, a recent game. Obviously, um, Sonic Forces was released, and it got absolutely scolded for being terrible and built up to be something it wasn't but um regardless i was just like no i've got my heart set on this game like i've i've made my decision i don't i'm not going to be swayed by like a bad review and much like if i didn't want it i wouldn't read a review and be like oh yeah no i'll go buy it now because that's completely sold me (laughs) i kind of i'm confident enough in my decisions and i think that i've made that decision for a reason so i don't kind of i don't pay attention to scores in that respect yeah I think at the end of the day, you will never know if you actually like a game unless you play the game. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Nobody can have the exact taste that you have when it comes to video games. So I've definitely played things before where I've been like, uh, I mean, Edith Finch, for example, I was a bit like, I don't know, like, it seems weird. And then I played it and I was like, this is incredible. But every review I'd read of it was, this is weird. You know, it's good, but it's it's weird. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. But, you know. The reviews are people's personal opinions at the end of the day and uh, nobody has the exact same opinion as you do so I do think that it probably um, is the best thing to do is if you're not sure is to just you know buy it and see what you think for yourself yeah exactly yeah I think so I think just having that number at the end just makes gives people a preconception of something before they've actually done yeah. anything about it because um, mm. I know there were, I, I used to read the the official PlayStation magazine quite a lot, and I'm sure they wrote an article about they all just dis- they all sat down and discussed whether to review out of five, out of ten, or out of a hundred, um, mm-hmm. because I suppose what's the diff? It's if something <laughs> gets fifty seven percent, that is technically a six out of ten, 
So yeah. what difference does it make make if it gets 57% or 6 out of 10 to a consumer? What what you know at what point do people start reading into it so much that they'll only buy a game if it gets over 64% or something like mm-hmm. it? Yeah. I understand why people don't do it out of 5, but because it doesn't there isn't enough wiggle room, but at the same time the less is probably more so a four or five out of five is a good game a three out of five is average and then anything under a three is just not not quite good mm. i don't you're just giving people more ammunition or more more choice by marking out of 10 but i know we mark yeah. out 10 I, I don't think we've ever had a discussion as to why we mark out of 10 um, no it's always just been yeah i just just it thing yeah and i think that's what most publications and most websites do they just probably just historic and yeah so it is an interesting topic and is, i can see why the d- the debate was being had and it's so hard to debate these kinds of things on twitter as well because um, <laughs> yeah. you only have a certain amount of characters you don't actually get the nuance of what people are saying to gauge their kind of um how they feel about it but i don't know for me i think it's fine giving 10 out of 10s i i yeah, I'd I'd do it to a few games if I reviewed them. Yeah, I see, and that's the thing that like, I don't I don't conceive it as a you're saying that game's perfect. I see it as you found that game thoroughly enjoyable. Like yeah. that's I suppose it's your kind of it's it's individual to each person. It's subjective. It's how they kind of like consider the numbers and what they're a kind of um, indicator of. I suppose. Yeah. And maybe that's where more transparency is needed. In that, if we if one of us gives a 10 out of 10, we're not saying it's the best game ever and it's perfect. We're just saying it's a really, really good game. So maybe there needs yeah. to be more education on our site as to how we're basing our reviews. Yeah. But maybe not. I was going to say who cares, but obviously Barry does. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think but that's not personal people, to Barry. I'm, you know, I'm, care. I, yeah, I speak to Barry I think a lot. I've, um, I've spoken to a few people who um, said, you know, we should scrap review numbers. They're pointless, but... You know, they are literally just there as a guideline at the end of the day. And they're there to say, um, you know, we liked this. We gave it an eight. Hopefully you'll like it as well. Or we didn't like this. We gave it a four. So you might like it. But the chances are, if you're like minded as we are, you won't enjoy it. That's just what they are at the end of the day. Yeah. And also as a as a kind of reviews website, if we want to get on to Metacritic and these things, we have to supply numbers. It, we You can't get on aggregators and you can't go to publishers with things like that if we're not doing what the industry is doing sadly that's so we have to make a choice do we ignore what everyone else is Mm -hmm. doing and become isolated or do we have to embrace it and i think at the moment we're trying to embrace it because we're small we're upcoming and we want to be on board with the bigger with the bigger i don't know with the other websites basically so we have to give a score And, and in order to do that we have to give our opinion so yeah yeah um, if anyone else has any thoughts on it though wants to get involved again everyone knows our Twitter um, just just let us know what you think and maybe let us know if a review has swayed you to buy or to not buy a game that would be quite interesting um, and what that game was as well because I don't know maybe I know that publishers get funny if re- review scores <laughs> come in and they're rubbish and you can get blacklisted sometimes as a reviewer for giving a game a bad score and really? as a consumer do you want to know do you want a true opinion or do you do you want someone to be scoring because publisher x has said well if you don't give our game an 8 out of 10 we're not going to give you any more review games mm. like at what point does a review become an advert so <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah interesting topic so Very interesting. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be good to hear what other people think. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Talking of other people, should we go on to what other people let's have asked go us? On to... Yeah, let's do it. Are we gonna hand over to Nick then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh so now it's time for user questions. Um our first question this week is from at Sean One who always asks us a question because he's such a star. Good on Sean. <laughs> but yeah. He knows we need them. <laughs> yeah. Fill in the airwaves. Um, <laughs> definitely right he asked us what game we are thinking of buying next even if it's just another to be thrown in the backlog so Re- rebecca 
Um, I've got two games I'm thinking of getting, and it's sort of I'm thinking of getting them, but I don't know if I like them, so I'm a bit like, I don't really know. Um, I really want to get Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, yes. I, I had issues with the other Assassin's Creed games, which is why I think I'm a little bit hesitant at the minute, but hopefully, yeah. um, you know, I've seen good things, and obviously I've read good things, like your review, you know, highly praised it. It's yeah. something I'd like to get into. I played it at EGX and I did think it was fun. I remember being really annoyed when the lady tapped my shoulder and she was like, your demo is up. And I was like, no, I want to play more. This is great. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> but I'm at the point now where obviously I'm so busy with university. It's like, can I really dedicate, you know, that much time to a big AA game? So I definitely, I think it's probably at the point where I definitely will get it. But when yeah. I will get it, I'm not sure. To to be fair, like it is a game you can kind of dip in and out of. Like yeah. it's really kind of easy to pick up where you've left off. So I don't think I think you can kind of work it around work. Yeah. But you know, it's it's entirely up to you and whether you want to take that on. I suppose. I mean, and the other one which I've only been like ooing and ahhing about because everybody keeps telling me it's amazing is Monster Hunter Worlds. Oh like, my I... god kind of want to play that <laughs> so I'm really like conflicted because everyone's telling me some people are saying don't get Monster Hunter Worlds get Assassin's Creed and then some people are saying get Monster Hunter Worlds um you know get yeah so I'm just like I don't know I'm saying do. get them both get them both now <laughs> exactly <laughs> Every, people are saying that to me as well and I'm just like I don't think I have the time right now but when I graduate university I'm definitely gonna just get back into gaming because it's been so long since I played a video game. <laughs> what about games that are coming out though? Because both those are, are they're well, already out. Um, yeah. Games that are coming out. Um, he, he, in all fairness, he did say that it could be true really anything. Yeah, I'll, try, I'll think I'm, of I'm, one of I'm, your... I'm mixing it up. <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to Detroit, and I'm glad that that's got a release date. I think that's going to be really enjoyable. Um, I'm looking forward to State of Mind, which comes out on the 30th of March. It's made by the same people who made Air, Memories of Old. And I, I really like the art style of that game and I liked the story and how it was told. So I'm looking forward to playing, you know, that same sort of game, but in a different world with a different genre. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just sort of just picking games up as I go. I'm not really, apart from the big titles, I haven't really got a lot of games on the horizon. I'm just like, oh, this one comes out next week. I'll buy that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's huh. a few. Okay, well. Dan, how about yourself? Um, I've got nothing pre-ordered at the moment. Um, <laughs> and there's nothing really this year at the moment. Again, I did, did a tweet. I always do a tweet. Did a tweet <laughs> with a list to the um, the kind of confirmed releases for this year. And, uh, oh, I saw that. Yeah, and there was just two games I possibly want were, were Burnout and Detroit, but I don't really like any of... Um, oh, what's his name? Is it David Cage? I don't really like yeah. any of his other games. So I don't know if I'm massively bothered about Detroit. So I want to see how that comes along. And then Burnout I've played before, so I'm not, you know, not queuing up at the door to get it. So really, there's nothing. Um, I've, I'm one of these people that if I want a game, I'll pre-order it and it'll come, whether I <laughs> need whether I need to play it or not. So I don't. There won't be anything from the back catalogue that I will, like you, Rebecca, kind of wait and get because I've already yeah. got it. So. Sadly, I don't know. For me, I really feel like there's a lull at the moment. And yeah, I know there yeah. isn't, because there's everyone's saying there's all these great game games lined up. But I don't know. For me, there's just nothing on the horizon that I'm I'm really looking forward to. So I can't really answer that, which is really <laughs> frustrating because I love buying new games. I love like loading up my pre orders, but yeah, I don't I don't know. Um so I'm going to say Burnout will probably be the next game I buy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'll keep you posted, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, you, Nick? Um, well, I've actually... I've I've been looking forward to this game for ages. Um, it's Space Hulk Deathwing. So it's a Games Workshop Warhammer-based game, obviously based in the 40k universe. And uh, I've been looking forward to it for so long. I've never um, heard of that. <laughs> oh, never it's heard so of Warhammer. No. Oh, oh, God. God. oh yeah, Warhammer. Yeah. Yeah. I don't it's, like not. A game of that. <laughs> it's like a game of that. The Games Workshop do loads of kind of um, the, like games of the kind of board game, like different it, like iterations. And this is one that I was really looking forward to. It's like a first-person shooter, and you're going against these kind of like um, for for because I, I know you you won't understand the jargon. Um, it's uh, 
you're going against kind of aliens in a way and it's really kind of intense and eerie and it's co-op and I'm just really psyched for it and I really can't wait it's out at the end of this month and I'm so buzzed (laughs) there's never been and I probably might get proved wrong on Twitter but there's never been an amazing games workshop game and the games workshop kind of lore and all of the worlds they've got and all of the kind of the different armies and that is massive and amazing and I know I think the only game they've got that is kind of that kind of works is that they're kind of warhammer iteration of total war on pc which can't be run on console because it's so intense right <laughs> but we were like going through uh, me and my other half were going through the other day and we were like looking at all the games that are on like playstation and they're very kind of they look very budget games if yeah. you know what i mean yeah. they're not very good when they've got such like you say an expansive law everything's really interesting when it comes to warhammer and it's a shame that that's never been kind of exhibited in a game because even down to kind of character customization and stuff you could because i Mm. i used to when i was a teenager play games workshop and buy a load of i used to have an army of space wolves which were space marines oh no it's all about tyranids daniel (laughs) but you know you could (laughs) i'd buy some and then you'd you'd cut them up and kind of make custom characters and then give them a backstory and you know there's so much that you could do kind of almost from a minecraft point of view possibly or something where you could create armies and uh, yeah but uh, maybe it's the fact that because it is already a game, as in it's a board game, and it just doesn't translate well to a video game. Possibly, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. But there must be a market for it, though. If you could, there must be. It's such a big. Even if you could just digitize a Games Workshop War, so you had like the board, or you know, the, the it's not a board, but you know what I mean, like the playing area, yeah. and you move the tanks and your army around with a on-screen ruler and on-screen dice or they could even do it as play link so the dice and all the 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 bits are on your phone and the wars going on on the screen like they could really do something great but maybe how you've not been hired by playstation is a miracle (laughs) (laughs) so yeah good question though good question yeah we got loads Um, so crack on yeah yeah he also asked um a kind of follow-up question which was um, he wanted to know which of us was going to be seeing the Tomb Raider movie, which I can settle easy by saying I will be. Yeah, I will be so. too, I'd imagine. I think I will. I don't think I'll see it in the cinema because cinemas are so expensive now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I think, I think I'll think i probably be one of these people who sees it when it comes on Sky Movies or something. <laughs> but yeah, I, I Sky will Sky Movies watch it. is more expensive than the cinema. I don't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> not for me, it's not. Yeah. I think that right. the trailer looked awful for it. I'm going oh to god that, oh yeah i do agree i still want to see it okay um right our second question is from the vectronic who asks if you had the opportunity to pick up an ip dead or still running on a whim and make a new game with infinite backing what ip would it be and what would you do with it nicole you start okay um croc <laughs> yeah just just because i want to see um, a platformer like it in today's market and I want to see it successful and I believe I would do that if I had the you know the backing and that because I know what I want to see from it but um I I just really want to see it remastered like that's that and if that's <laughs> just the way I'd have to go about it I'll, I'll do that do <laughs> so it. yeah what do you reckon the chances what, are of it being remastered uh very low because I think the the, the like the developer company um like disbanded oh, they like they should yeah. yeah so um i'm i don't know unless something if someone else took it up um a smaller studio perhaps um but i, I just don't think it's likely it's a very underrated classic as well yeah. so i'm not sure that it's on like when you see the likes of spire and crash bandicoot no one's it's it's only kind of diehard fans that are like please croc please croc yeah. <laughs> so yeah oh well stranger things have happened you never know mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> Um, Rebecca? I don't really have an answer for this one. I was trying to think of something, um, but I'm pretty pretty happy with uh, everything that's been going on. You know, the developers and what they've been doing from their own mindset. I think they're doing a better job than I'd ever be able to do. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so I'm sort of just happy with, you know, what's being produced IP-wise as it goes now. So yeah, I don't really have an answer for that question. Oh. Cool. Mm. I've got a controversial answer. The first, oh, for the first one, but I won't explain <laughs> it. All I'd, all I'd like is them to do a proper Resident Evil game. So that would be <laughs> my controversial answer. I'd make a proper Resident Evil game. With regards to bringing back an IP, um, 
Dino Crisis would be good if they got super massive to do it in like the Until Dawn engine would be amazing. Did anyone ever play Dino Crisis? No. Okay, <laughs> so it was basically Resident Evil, but the baddies were dinosaurs rather than zombies. I'm so, sold. I'm yeah, sold. Was um, so yeah, like a modern version of that. Everyone loves dinosaurs, so that True. would be awesome. I, I, I wrote down Time Splitters as well. Um, Time Splitters Two oh, yeah, yeah. is like an all-time classic, and. If the guys or the team that made Wolfenstein, so the, that was Bethesda, if they could yeah. be given the Time Splitters license, I think it would be really good. Mm. Um, so mm. yeah, Power Stone was another one I wrote down, which was a Dreamcast <laughs> classic, like a bit like Smash Brothers, I suppose, but in a 3D space. So oh, yeah. yeah, that was good. So yeah, they'd be mine. Okay. Um, right. So our next question is from Houster34, who as mentioned earlier, would like us to discuss the PS5 rumour and whether or not we'd buy it if it saw a release by Christmas and obviously what would kind of entice us to buy it, like what alterations they'd have to make from a PS4 Pro to make us want to buy it. Uh, mm. Shall I start? So I'd buy it. Yeah. I'd, I'd pre-order it. you buy it straight instantly. away. Yeah, I'd go down to wherever at midnight and pick it up or something. I'd, yeah, I'd be... It doesn't matter what the price is or anything, I'd just buy it. Um so yeah, I'll do that. With regards to what it needs to do different though, like this is what we touched upon in the news. I almost yeah. don't know what it can do different. Mm. I feel that we're at a plateau maybe of function for me personally, uh, between functionality and games with the PlayStation 4, I feel it's hit the the sweet spot. It for me it doesn't do anything more than it needs to do. Therefore, there's not loads of stuff you need to keep signing up for or stuff you need to keep downloading or you know I don't use it for streaming I don't use it for anything but gaming or sharing screenshots but which is probably why I can say that I feel it's hit a plateau actually um so I don't know I don't know what it can add I suppose for, for me it just has to have the games so it has to have a game on it that can't be played on the PS4 so whether that's graphically or I don't know. Just if they came out and said The Last of Us 2 is a PS5 exclusive, then sold. Just, <laughs> no, I don't I if they're going to say oh it's got waggly controllers or it's I don't know, you know, got this that and the other or x amount of teraflops or two disk drives, <laughs> it, none of that matters. I just just yeah. want a game that makes me go wow. So for me that's what it would be. So yeah, I'd buy it and it would just have to have the, the best games. <laughs> what about you, Rebecca? I feel like I'm kind of the same. I don't know if I'd buy it straight away. Um, I might be more of a, I'd wait until I found something that I was like, I need to play this. I can't, you know, be a gamer and not play this game, if you know what I mean. Like, so something that yeah. I... So, for example, Le for yeah. example. Just saying. So say they released the, the PS5, um, and they just released, if they released Last of Us, I'd get it straight away. But if they just released, you know, a few launch games that I wasn't too bothered by, I'd probably wait until there was something that I was like, I need to play this game right now, so I'm going to have to go and get a PS5. But I'm sort of the same. I'm not really fussed about, um, you know, the graphics or the RAM or anything like that. As long as it can play, um, a, you know, a bunch of games that I want to play, then I'm probably going to get it. Yeah. And if they can up huh. the Twitter character limit as well, I'd buy it. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Um, I'm kind of, I don't know, um, I, I'm not one that's kind of keen for buying new consoles immediately. Like, I'd like to give them time to kind of work out the kinks. And, I mean, when I still get so much enjoyment out of my PS4, I find it hard to justify such a spend. Like, because I, I didn't get, even with the Pokemon kind of franchise taking their step up when they went to 3DS and Pokemon X and Y was released... I'm a huge Pokemon fan, but I didn't make that jump because I couldn't justify it because yeah. I couldn't fork out for a new 3DS console. And I thought I was still getting loads of enjoyment out of my standard DS. And I kind of, I did put the franchise on the hold and I just, I think that would be the same of PS5. For instance, I don't even know what they could do to entice me because I'm so thoroughly engrossed in my PS4 still. Croc HD. And <laughs> There's always something there. don't do that because that's a selling point for sure yeah but um i don't know i i just i don't think i'd buy it straight away i think it would take me a couple of months at least to warm to the idea of it because i i just 
I enjoy my PS4 too much, and it's a lot of money to kind of blow out for something that where I'd still be using my old console for ninety percent of the time. So I just yeah. couldn't not have one, knowing that other people are playing it. <laughs> That's like my problem. Like yeah. I've got. I, I need to. If it's new, and it's something, you play. yeah, I've just got to have it. So yeah. I couldn't sit and wait a month or two months. Uh, obviously. I, if I had to for for money reasons or something like that, I'd have to. But if I if yeah. I didn't, and it was a choice, I couldn't sit and wait. I'd I'd have to buy it. I'm just yeah. just just the way my brain's wired. I, <laughs> so yeah, but yeah. it's interesting. I don't know though. I don't think we'll see anything of it this year. No, neither do I. I don't think we will. But right. So at Sheep Thrower asked. Which exclusive from another platform would you jump at the chance of having on PlayStation, like on a PlayStation console, i.e. PS4 or Vita? And I, I'll rock, get the ball rolling by saying I'd like to see Pokemon on Vita. I think that would be quite fun, and it would that definitely ignite ignite a fire on the console more. Maybe they do more with it, mm-hmm. but um, I, I definitely think it's, it's a franchise that should stay on handheld. But um, I'd definitely enjoy that. I think that'd be quite good. Mm-hmm. Anyone mm-hmm. else? Shout out to Ian. I like Ian. He's good. Ian's cool. <laughs> He's one of my favourites on Twitter. Um, is it, is it, is so your answer, is it? <laughs> That's your answer. <laughs> yeah, I just love Ian. Um, uh, I'd just go down the usual Zelda, Mario. Like, just all the best Switch games, please. Because I don't like playing on the Switch, but I want the games. <laughs> I sound, and it sounds like I'm fishing for an argument or something, but there's just nothing on Xbox at all. And I'm not being a git. I just there's just nothing on that console that I'd want to pull across the PS4 at the moment. Mm. So for me it would just be Nintendo games. Like if if Nintendo would go multi platform or no yeah. Not multi platform, but if they just come to PlayStation rather than everyone, then that would <laughs> make my I, I wouldn't feel like I'm missing out on anything else, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I've seen a lot of people playing Sea of Thieves and loving it, and I know that's we've mine. kind of yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I, I follow the girl that's the um, community manager, and she's been posting lots of people's screenshots and stuff. And for the amount that some people have slagged it off, I think there is yeah. something underneath that kind of skin that could be good. So sorry, yeah, you carry on. It does look good. Yeah. So I, um, I'd say I'd probably want Sea of Thieves. Just I think for just a little bit of an experiment because I think um it's not going to be very easy to play single player. It's going to be something you need to do with your friends. But um, I played the bit at EGX and I just loved it. And I was like, I want to play this on PlayStation, but it doesn't exist on PlayStation. I just think it looks gorgeous. And, you know, playing it at the demo was really good fun and it was a laugh. So I think if I had to port one over right now, for the time being, like where I am right now, I think I'd like to play a bit of Sea of Thieves. But um, can't really think of, anything else i think i'm really happy with the playstation library if i'm being honest yeah no, i think Fair enough. sea of thieves we're well, not that we'll talk about it too long because it's not playstation but it almost again <laughs> a bit like when we talked about the division it sounds like mm-hmm. it's going to rely on there being a either having a gang of friends sure. that are on it or a big user base and it it i suppose because microsoft own rare it can only be on xbox but you kind mm. of feel like that game does need to be multi-platform. It does need the users. Uh, it, yeah, I agree. It needs cross-play. There's been something in the news about, um, I don't know what game it was, now having cross-play added between everyone. Uh, I don't yeah, know I, I heard about that. I can't remember what yeah, it was, though. Oh, no. I don't think Microsoft <laughs> were, uh, were okaying it but or, or whatever. But, you know, th- for that game, that would be its biggest lifeline, I think, to just open up every gamer to it um, for all those types of games not just Sea of Thieves but you know because then you've got a huge install base to try and market to yeah Mm. cool okay Um, right so our last question asks for a bit of speculation I suppose uh, from Kieran Rosart who asks what was the game from software was teasing Mm -hmm. as it's gone quiet since and Mm -hmm. I thought Rebecca might like this Mm -hmm. one so (laughs) I want it to be Bloodborne too, but I don't. I think it's going to be that Shadow Tower thing. Is that right? Is that what it's called, Shadow Tower? Oh, I don't know. I've not been following it. Could that not Something just be a, um, a kind of code name for it, though? 
Oh, I don't know. I mean, the thing that made me think Bloodborne was obviously, you know, the twisted contraption and then there's blood, but the Chinese or Japanese writing on the background made me think, oh, I don't know. Like, they're either trying to throw us off or I'm completely, you know, wishful thinking here and I'm completely in the wrong. So I'm, I don't know. I, I mean, it'll be nice knowing that at some point we're going to hear more from it. So that's nice to think about it upcoming. If I'm being honest, I completely forgot all about it. <laughs> Without putting a round peg in a square hole, do wonder if one of the teams that received a PS5 dev kit earlier this year was from software. Maybe. And what they're working on mm. is actually a PS5 launch game as opposed to a current PS4 game because nothing's been said. But again, like I say, that's putting two things together that probably don't go. I don't know enough about from software anyway to be able to answer the question for Kira. Yeah, that's, that's, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. from software. <laughs> yeah, if you don't like their game. I'm very disappointed in you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, it's so... exciting, isn't it? Knowing that in the future, we'll find out a bit more. I literally completely forgot all about it. I, ho- I hope it's Bloodborne 2 for you. Because... <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> so if it's not, it, right? she's going to kill herself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's lives at risk. Yeah. You'll all know about it if it's not Bloodborne 2. Make it Bloodborne 2 or I <laughs> so. Yeah, we're, we're going to lose a podcaster. Talking yeah. of like rumours, didn't Bluepoint, who just finished making Shadow of the Colossus, hint towards their remastering something else as well at the moment? But they haven't something. said what. Or they were advertising yeah. for jobs to help them remaster something, I think. Croc. Cough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Croc? Was there an R Croc. in there? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've got to my chest at the moment. <laughs> cool. Is, yeah. that, is that all our user questions? Yeah, so um, with that, I was going to move very swiftly onto what we've been playing Do, who wants to get the ball rolling i will quick again because as as per last week i haven't played much i mm-hmm. finally platinum shadow mm-hmm. of the colossus which was a lot easier than i had anticipated i think it took 19 hours so not not too long at all really um but pleased to have platinumed it i wanted that one in my collection because it's an amazing mm-hmm. game um, and then I've been playing a game called Midnight Deluxe, which was sent to me by the publisher. And it's basically like if Tiger Woods, PGA Tour Golf and Angry Birds had a love child, mm. it would be this game. So <laughs> you basically have to control a little square of light into a hole through a course. So it's quite good. It's Ooh. it's basically like all of the publisher's games. I can never pronounce the publisher's name it's something like Raticalia, i think and their little logo is a little pixel dog so it's quite cool but all their games are cheap and quick and easy platinums so this one takes about half an hour and there's a platinum for ps4 and for ps vita so for the entry price you get two platinum trophies as well um but mm-hmm. so people will buy it for that reason but it is also actually quite a good fun little game and it's got a nice soundtrack so yeah that's what i've been playing Job done. Okie dokie. Rebecca? Um, so, two things. I can't talk about one of them, but I have been playing Cube 2. My review is going out tomorrow, so I'll leave it there. Um, I haven't played my PS4, aside from that review game, at all week, because I've just been so busy with my dissertation. But um, I finally got Jack, my boyfriend, Zelda, um, and I've sort of been playing that. And I, have, I don't know, I'm quite interested in where it's going to go, because... I don't like change, and it's very different from a typical Zelda game. So there's a lot of different things, and there's like aspects that are, you know have been in every zi- uh, sorry words every single Zelda game religiously, and then they're not there anymore. So for me, it's a bit like what's happening. Like this doesn't feel like Zelda to me. It's still really good, and I love the aspect of just being an open world game and going off and hunting, and you know you get to cook all your health, which is good fun. But I, I don't know, at the minute, and it might be because I've not played a lot of it, It's I feel like I'm waiting for the Zelda game to begin, if you know what I mean. Don't hold but, your breath. Um, <laughs> I say my boyfriend loves it, and I bought it him, um, so I'm glad he likes it. I, I don't know, I do like it, but I every time I play it, I, I'm like, oh, I'd love to play Twilight Princess or Wind Waker right now, which yeah. is like not, not a good thing. <laughs> it is, it's an amazing game. It, and when you play it for the first time, you're like, yeah, this is the best game ever, it's just breathtaking but then i mean i spent i can't remember what i said 35 40 hours on it Mm. and just nothing happens it's (laughs) it's it's almost like a second life game 
to some extent there's you know there is a little bit of a story and you can finish it but the best bit about it is just existing in the world that you're in i think yeah and, and i think when that then wears off there's then no drive to carry on but mm, whilst yeah. it's whilst you're enjoying it for for what it is it's amazing that's the best way i could put it yeah oh okay um well this week i received my limited edition physical copy of life of strange before the storm at long last <laughs> so um i was really really happy with the limited edition it came with like an art book cd and it was really kind of consistent with the limited edition of the previous game which i like so it's, it looks so uh, it's the consistency on my shelf it's my uniformed. materialistic side yeah. is yeah oh it's my materialistic side is literally overwhelmed with glee it's so good but um yeah i've finished the three episodes of like before the storm over the past two days and it's such an emotional journey um i actually remembered you mentioned in a previous podcast and that you're a bit dubious in that it being a precursor to a game like you've already played and knowing the outcome yeah um whether it would affect the impact of the game and i just i I felt it didn't take anything from the game at all um like i had doubts that the timeline of events would be predictable but um I was just still in awe throughout of just the twists and turns that the story takes. So it still it's manages absolutely to incredible. Do that, does it? It's, yeah, does it feel it's... forced in doing that, or does it still no, feel natural? It feels it feels natural, and it just it adds depth to the game. Like all these characters that you fell in love with in Life is Strange. Excuse me, the dogs going nuts. Um, <laughs> but yeah, all the characters you fall in love with in Life is Strange—they're all made all the more real. And um, I've always found Life is Strange a very relatable game, and it makes it even more so when you believe the characters more. And um, oh, it's just, it's really, really good. I was crying throughout. I had a, <laughs> I had a wad of tissue at hand, like, towards the end, because it's just so sad. But um, it's just the soundtrack as well is phenomenal. It just flows coherently with, like, all the emotional arcs. And I just absolutely, thor- like, thoroughly enjoyed it. I can I could not floor it. I, I thought I'd be slightly disappointed by it but i just wasn't remotely and it was a real nice kind of feeling to not be and i've got to play the farewell episode now because i'm really excited to play that the bonus episode so cool i'm just waiting to do that later on but yeah that's i'll hand over to you now dan yeah i'll do the goodbyes so (laughs) it's been a good episode after that flipping speed bump at the start that hopefully no one hears because joe (laughs) cuts it out he won't cut it out (laughs) Um, so i just wanted to before we wrap up um mention sqxo march which if you haven't listened before or if you don't follow us on twitter if you share a ps4 share screenshot if you hashtag it with the letters sqxo and then the month which currently is march um goes into our competition historically we've been giving away sack boy key rings sadly i've run out so we can't give them away anymore Mm -hmm. however this month we have been given a prize from the guys at insert coin who are they basically make clothing based on video game titles if you don't know Uh, look them up (laughs) if you haven't done so before um so we've got for this month's sqxo march winner the prize will be two pairs of playstation socks and nathan drake's scarf which is like a blue and white checkered scarf i suppose uh, i think he wears it in uncharted 3 is that right yeah yeah, yeah. um i'll put a tweet out as well but if you're listening and you haven't seen it on twitter there you go um so yeah it's a really good prize and i've got to say thank you to insert coin for being so kind to supply us some stuff to give away um hopefully it will get people's creative screenshot juices flowing knowing that there's a, a new prize because a few people have uh, we've been doing it probably a year now. In June, yeah. I think we did a year. Yeah, so yeah, there's a few key rings knocking about. A few people get nominated quite regularly, so at least now you're going to get a new prize if you win. Um, we should congratulate our last winner, actually, as well, whose Assassin's Creed picture was so good that it did make me want to play the game. So <laughs> that does say something about a screenshot. Um, so, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that, and I know we've got our regulars that enter and, you know, that, that are always there, but we've probably got more listeners than 10 people so get sharing we we like seeing your screens and i might retweet some just to annoy everyone (laughs) at some point um so yeah i just wanted to let people know really and we have got more exciting prizes to come in the coming months um 
because we've run out of key rings we need more stuff to give away so yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and with that we'll um we might as well wrap up the podcast hour and five minutes it's been good i think yeah um so yeah thank you everybody for listening uh, don't forget to follow us on twitter go to our website all that stuff i won't trip over it again um and uh hopefully next week we'll be back as a, a foursome and yeah we'll see you then thanks for listening <laughs> goodbye <laughs> bye <laughs> bye